Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Something very interesting happened earlier this week in regards to the United States repo rate. Now, if you remember, the SOFR rate that we talked about in previous episodes is directly connected to the repo rate. And although the repo rate hasn't really done anything all that exciting, earlier this week, the reverse repo rate did. Now, I don't wanna get into it in this episode, but the repo rate can be used as sort of a fortune telling seeing eyeglass to determine how much turbulence there is in the economy and overall market so that you can also predict when certain economic crashes are going to occur. Now, the real question is, will they occur sooner or rather than later? And unfortunately, no one can really tell. All we can look at is the repo rate and other signals to determine whether or not there is stability or lack thereof. And in this video, again, I wanna dive into the repo rate and the reverse repo rate to hopefully show you guys what it is I'm seeing so that you could be made aware and make your investing decisions accordingly. So with that being said, let's get into it. So for starters, let's talk about the repo rate. So the repo rate isn't repo as in like repossess, like you forgot to pay your mortgage or your car or anything like that. The repo rate is actually the interest rate that's charged on repurchasing agreements when it comes to the Federal Reserve and other financial institutions. Now the repo rate converts treasury bills into money, into dollars. And basically what happens is when the banks need more money, need more liquid dollars, they sell or trade, depending on how you look at it, their treasury bills to the Federal Reserve. And in exchange, the Federal Reserve issues them bank reserves or money, dollar bills. And this might be to satisfy extra lending. This may be to satisfy their holdings or their reserves. There could be numerous issues on why a financial institution would do this with the Federal Reserve. That portion of things doesn't really matter. What happens is they only need the money for a short period of time. So the financial institutions will hand over their treasury bills to the Federal Reserve in exchange for bank reserves. And after a specified period of time, the financial institution will give that money back plus interest in exchange for the treasury bills that they gave as collateral. Now that's the standard repo market. The reverse repo market that I wanna to talk to you about today is the exact opposite of that. It's still between the Federal Reserve and financial institutions, but instead of treasury bills for dollars, it is now dollars for treasury bill. So what's currently happening now is that banks have too much liquidity or too much actual dollars in their accounts and they're trying to exchange them with the Federal Reserve for Treasury bills. This is basically the exact same thing as the repo market except they want the Treasury bills back instead of want the dollars. Now you might be thinking to yourself why is this significant whatsoever? And the reason we track the repo rate as well as the reverse repo rate is because we can use it to see how much turbulence there is in the broader economy. And obviously, if there's a lot of turbulence and a lot of bumps in the road, we know that there is going to be a correction or some sort of downturn in the economy relatively soon to correct for all that turbulence. Now, quickly moving away from the repo and reverse repo rate, I wanna to talk to you about the Treasury General Account. Think of this like the federal government's checking account. This is where they keep their money and this is where they spend their money on various projects and funding. Now on the screen, I'm gonna show you a graph of their general account. Now you see that it's pretty much level and low up until last year where the Federal Reserve just flooded their general account with all this brand new money that they printed. So you can see that the Treasury General's account just went completely parabolic and went straight up. But the problem is the Treasury General account wasn't spending any of that money. They were spending money that they already would have had all last year and parts of this year. What we see starting January of this year, January of 2021, is a complete liquidation of the Treasury General account, meaning they are finally starting to use the amount of money that was printed for them last year. This is why we didn't see a lot of inflation last year, because even though the feds printed a lot and a lot of money last year, it was all stored up in the federal government's checking account. But now that they're actually spending it, those printed dollars are now hitting the economy. They're actually being injected into the economy and to other businesses as well. So because this started happening January of this year, this is why we're seeing the price of everything go up 20% every couple days and things are just skyrocketing in price. It's because finally the trillions of dollars the Federal Reserve printed last year are actually only now being injected into the market. So that graph showed you the Treasury General account being liquidated. 
Now I want to show you the graph of the reverse repo rate. You'll see that the two kind of have an inverse relationship. Because so much printed money is leaving the federal government's checking account and going into the economy and going into the marketplace, financial institutions have way too much cash on hands now. This is why they're trying to get rid of the cash and exchange it for government treasuries at the Federal Reserve. So because all these people are trying to flood the Federal Reserve with their excess cash in exchange for treasuries, the reverse repo rate, the interest that they have to pay on it, goes up, goes parabolic as well. Now, I also just want to remind everyone that the repo rate has stayed in its extremely low, stable state because the Federal Reserve has committed to printing billions of dollars every day and putting it into the repo market. They're actually even thinking of setting up a designated building and a new designated office strictly for repo and reverse repo. Now, to bring everything together for you in a real easy to understand package, what this is telling me and every other analyst out there is that the Federal Reserve and in turn the government is using credit to pay back credit. And eventually, interest rate will be due on both. Think about this yourself. If you used a credit card to pay off completely another credit card and then used that now paid off credit card to pay off the other credit card and you just kept doing this back and forth, back and forth. Well, theoretically, you can get away with this for quite a long while without actually paying any of your debt off. But the problem is the interest that you accrue on each credit card, one over here and over here, that interest slowly adds up. And if you're doing what the federal government is doing and not slowing down spending whatsoever, then, then not only are you just transferring debt to debt and racking up your interest, but you're also adding more and more debt on top of that. And this is exactly what we see happening in the repo and reverse repo rates right now. The regular repo rate that I explained to you in a previous episode skyrocketed over 500 basis points. When that happened, the Federal Reserve injected billions of dollars every day to lower it back down. But now we see the other side of that coin. We see the other credit card in a sense, the reverse repo rate skyrocketing now. So now they're thinking about setting up a completely designated office to try and play teeter-totter and manage both sides of this debt. But we know because our economy is such a complex machine, that whenever you start meddling with one working piece and another, something is bound to break. You can only meddle with this type of stuff for so long before things start to break. And as I already explained to you, if the repo rate starts to skyrocket like we know it will in the future, then the SOFA rate that is connected to that repo rate is going to skyrocket as well, completely making all derivative deals blow up and just to put it into perspective for you, in 2008, the derivatives that were connected to the housing market imploded, causing a giant, and I mean a global financial crisis event to happen. But in this case, because the SOFA rate is connected to every derivative and not just the housing market, when this particular cog in our wheel starts to jam, every derivative, not just the housing market derivatives, will be affected, which needless to say is a giant cause for concern. Now, it's never really exciting to me talking about the potential for another Great Depression, but what is exciting is that we have many, many warning signs. All you have to do is pay attention. We had the warning sign of the skyrocket of the repo rate a couple years ago. Now we have the skyrocketing of the reverse repo rate and the Fed announcing that they're gonna create an entirely new structure and new division to solely handle the repo rate and the repo transactions themselves. So we have ample warning time to prepare and to get ready for this teeter-totter to get more and more out of control and to structure our investments and our savings and the way we do business accordingly. We can't keep our money in saving because the Treasury General account, the federal government's checking account, is being liquidated. It's causing massive amounts of inflation. So you can't just hoard your cash. You also don't want to invest solely into the United States economy and our markets themselves because when those come crumbling down as they inevitably will, your money will be affected as well. So really, what do we do? Where do we put our money and how can we best prepare for this? This is the question that I'm gonna answer in my next episode. So if you haven't done so already, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below telling me what your thoughts are on all these warning signs. And I'll see you in my next episode.